Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I visit a German distillery and it's the St. Killian distillery. It's a relatively young distillery. It was, uh, the company was founded in 2012 by Andreas Tümmler and he had help from David Heinz, an Irishman, and they sat together at a bonfire and they they just came from a whiskey fair and they, they argued and they said, uh, and they, they suddenly found the idea, hey, why can't we build a whiskey distillery here in Rüdenau? And that's exactly what they did. They ordered the, the distillation, uh, the, the pot stills back in 2015, did all the projecting and all the, all that kind of stuff. And then in 2016, uh, in March, they had their first distillate. So um, the, the, uh, the product is relatively new. They only have a white dog. And um, the St. Killian distillery is uh, a distillery that has the, uh, the Scottish as like, like um, they try to be a bit like the Scottish, but they have a lot of influence from the Irishman, and that's why they chose the name St. Killian, because there were three monks um, that are relatively famous in this area here, and they are to be said they, that they brought the Aquavite here to this area. So that's the St. Killian distillery, and that's what we're gonna have a look at today. The start of the production is always the raw materials, and the St. Killian distillery is a distillery that has uh, uses different malts. So they use uh, peated malt and unpeated malt, and they try to get a, a ratio of 70 to 30, and for their so 70 peated and 30 unpeated malt and for that peated malt they are looking at a ppm of about 50 uh, 52 so we're looking at a, a really a really really smoky peaty whiskey and they get the the unpeated malt from germany which germany has a a great malt culture with all the different beers um, but they don't have the culture of peated malt so the the peated malt has to be imported from Scotland. They are a relatively young company, so they still uh, did some, some tries with different malts and tried to find their style and in what kind of direction they want to go. And you can vary with different malts to get different flavors. And they, they will also do a little, um, a little uh, variation with the malt because there is a famous German beer, the Schlengerle from Bamberg, which has a, a smoked malt that has been smoked over, over wood. And this wood flavor is a, a very distinct flavor that goes into the direction of a, of a ham, of a really, really smoked ham. So that's what they have here with the malt. They do have a well, which is unfortunately not functioning at the time, but we will come to that in the interview. The next step in the production is the uh, the malt mill. It's a Bühler malt mill and it has two pairs of rollers and here you have levers to, um, to uh, adjust the rolling distances to get the, uh, the grist out of the, the mill in the, the right consistency. And the consistency um, is to be regularly checked. You have 20% uh, husks, then you have uh, the 70% uh, uh, grit, I think it's called, and then you have 10% flour, and that's the, the perfect amount to get an, uh, um, most yield out of in the mash ton. The quality um, inspection is done regularly with this measurement unit here. You put in 100 grams of your, your grist, and you close it, you shake it, and then it's been filtered through this mesh, and then you can weight all the different um, materials and have a look what uh, is inside your grist. The batch is 2.2 uh, tons and they use 100% malted barley. The 2.2 tons of uh, grist from the malted barley um, uh, end up here in the mash tun and they will be washed out with hot water and that solves the, the sugar and the starches that are needed to be fermented into the alcohol. 
They have a capacity, the mesh tun has a capacity of 12,000 liters and it's made of stainless steel. The wood down here is just for the optics, so it looks good. They do three washings, means that they have three batches of washing and the third uh, uh, time they do the washing, uh, they recycle the water, so they, they save the water and this water that is, has already some solved sugars and starches in it that is being used in the, the next batch, batch for the first washing. And that goes then on to the wash bags. Behind me are the wash bags. The wash bags are traditional wash bags and they are made of wood. And uh, the, the use of wooden wash bags is not just tradition, but that actually serves a purpose because during the 62 hours of fermentation there is not just alcoholic fermentation going on but they also have uh, lactobacteria that live inside the wood and these influence the, the flavor of the beer that is produced and that's, that's exactly what the distillery wants. What they also do is they do chilling so they have controlled temperature during the fermentation there is uh, heat and the heat uh, increases the temperature and when the temperature rises 32 degrees Celsius then they stop the, the rise in temperature by special cooling plates. At the end of the 62 hour fermentation we have a beer with 8% alcohol and this is all done by uh, special distiller's yeast that comes from Scotland, which is traditional for using when they distill Scottish whiskey. The distillery has four wash bags with a capacity of 10,800 liter each, and that goes then into the wash still. And now we come to the hard piece of the distillery, the distillation. This year is the wash still. It's a uh, wash still with uh, 6,000 liters capacity. So that means you have uh, one wash bag fills this wash still twice. With, um, they fill it with 5,400 liters of wash. And if you look at the, the wash still, it's a fourth size. Fourth size is a very famous uh, company from Scotland. They produce pot stills and different distilling equipment. And what you can also see is that this is a pot still inside Germany because you have all these little buttons and ribbons here and they are from the taxman. So the taxman really wants everything here enclosed so you can't open these bolts and steal some of the vapors and then condense it and have untaxed whiskey. So you even have some special equipment around the flange of the neck of the pot stills to the line arm. So that's the German tax code, very, very strict. To the shape of the, the pot stills, both pot stills are identical from the, the shape, is they are a bit wider. That's because of a bit of a, the restriction of the building. So they have to be a bit wider, so otherwise they wouldn't have that big capacity and that big area, surface areas of copper that you want to get a really good whiskey. And what they also did is they created a rising line arm. So everything that condenses in the line arm flows back into the pot. That is especially important if you have it inside the spirit still because the spirit still is really what defines your whiskey. That is what creates the flavor of the new make spirit and that ends up in the cask and that defines your spirit. And what they have special here is they have a reflux condenser and that condenses the spirit inside the line arm and flows back into the pot. And they can control this reflux condenser so they can exactly adjust how much reflux they want to create and how much mildness they want to have in their spirit. And that was always a, a trade-off between, between mildness that you know from the, the Irish whiskies, they have very mild whiskies and from the very rough whiskies that you know from certain Scotch whiskey distilleries. So, um, this here is the spirit safe. This is the machine for the, the distiller and the master distiller to create the, the spirit that they want to produce. You have these levers, they fill up these 
um, glass pipes where you can measure the alcohol at the different stages of the production. And what they also have here is a special lever that is actually taken, uh, controlled by the taxman as well. So every drop in every milliliter that is filled out into this glass is actually taxed. And what they do is they distill their whiskey by flavor. So at every cutoff point when they, they want to cut off from the, the four shots to the hard piece, they, they do that by nosing. So that is a, a very traditional style. Usually you have cutoff points at certain, uh, certain uh, degrees or certain percentages of alcohol, but they do it with a flavor because they believe in the flavor. They want to create with flavor, so you have to control the flavor that goes into the cask. And now we come to the favorite part of every uh, whiskey distillery visit, and that is the cask warehouse. Oh, there's just that smell of whiskey maturing is just incredible. It's a very relatively young distillery, so you might see here, every here and there, there is a smaller cask because smaller casks have more wood compared to the volume inside, so it matures a bit faster, so you get results a bit faster. But they also do have a huge number of other barrels. Bourbon barrels, we have rum barrels, we have wine barrels, there are sherry casks, and here behind me you see fresh casks. These are um, cars made of uh, chestnut, very, very nice. Uh, I didn't even know that they could produce chestnut uh, cars that are really airtight. So you have a lot of variation. And what is very interesting is that you have these casks here. Everything uh, behind this line here uh, doesn't belong to some Kilian anymore. They are actually sold casks to customers. So you can buy a cask as, at St. Kilian. You can say, I want a bourbon cask with a non-peated whiskey. And then they fill that uh, cask up and store that for you. And um, after a while, when I mean, the whiskey is matured, you can, you can choose to uh, then bottle that whiskey and have your very own bottling of your very own cask that you chose beforehand. And then enjoy it with all your friends and distribute your own bottles to your your little circle of whiskey enthusiasts. So that was it with the production and now we continue with the interview. So that was it with the distillery tour and now I'm standing here with Mario Rudolf and he is the master distiller or a master distiller of the distillery and he built the distillery up from the beginning. You have a lot of experience with beer and malting. You've came from that direction. You, you met a lot of international master distillers and master blenders. So how is it that you came to this distillery? What's your, your backstory? Yeah, my backstory is that I have been a brewmaster before and um, I did learn brewing and malting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, then I studied in Weinstefan and uh, this is my hometown here, and so it was easy for me to, to switch to whiskey mm -hmm. producing. So, uh, and of course, the first step is making a good beer, mm -hmm. then making distillation, and making a good whiskey. So it's easy for me as a brewer to work in a whiskey distillery. So, so are you missing the hops? <laughs> oh, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So you so, don't use hops here. But right? in the end we don't need it for a good whiskey, so <laughs> it's not hard for me. So. Later we will build up a little craft brewery and then ah, nice, we'll build nice, yeah. hops will deck again. Yeah, yeah. Well, we Germans are not known for their whiskey yet. <laughs> yes. So what are we having today? What is, what is that stuff? Is that whiskey? Yeah, it seems to be whiskey. No, it doesn't have a color. It is, it is a new make. Mm -hmm. And so we have two uh, types of new make. We have a white dog range with um, different alcohol contents of about uh, 43, 63.5 cask strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 66.6. That's Ooh. a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it's for a metal band, uh, which mm -hmm. are friends of us and uh, special release. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is more the fruity ones, and the, the peated ones is the turf dog, yeah, mm -hmm. with 49.9 percent alcohol. And uh, yeah, so, yeah. Let, let's have the first one, the the, the mild one with 43 percent. Yes, yes. It's a new make. Oh yeah, you have a lot of peer in there. 
it always amazes me that that when you when you smell into that glass you could almost say that's like oh okay that's a, a pure liquor pure schnapps yeah some people wonder that it is a, a grain distillate mm -hmm. but we uh, we find a lot of fruit in it mm -hmm. but that's the thing of uh, making a beer mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot of fruits out of the yeast of mm -hmm. the fermentation process and that's what you find in the distillate so mm -hmm. It's not only mm -hmm. the malt, it's not only the grain that you find, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of fruits and, yeah. So, um, you've been here from, from the start with the experimenting and you have defined this as your, your standard product, as your product now. So, how was that journey? How was the highlights, yeah. backslash, lashes and... and a lot of different uh, <laughs> batches, a lot of mesh builds, uh, uh, different malts, uh, mm -hmm. caramel malts and... Um, roasty malts Ooh, okay. so we did try a lot of different recipes and uh, in the end we did find out okay this is the best for our new white dog this is mm -hmm. our standard mm -hmm. recipe but also we did make some difference mm -hmm. different batches and so we will find uh, special releases in the future mm -hmm. um, this is the, 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 the one thing to make some different malts um, the other thing is temperatures yeast different yeast different water mounts so you can do a lot of things different to get a different uh, new make in the end mm -hmm. and on top the distillation of course it's very very important and uh, we have a thing called reflux condenser which allows us to to variate in the uh, distillation process in the spirit still yeah a very so, special thing i have yeah. not seen a reflux condenser yet i, yeah. I know some some very parts like with the, the thing with art bag and you have a lemon still pur purifier and, or something like that and yeah. you have reflux bowls and that kind of stuff yeah. but i think yeah. yours is a bit too to individualize yeah. nice nice thing yeah. so so the second one is how how is it different the only difference is the, is the alcohol content. It's 63.5%. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, cask strength. So mm -hmm. that's what we're filling in our cask. Mm -hmm. And so we want to allow the people to test, okay, what is the basic mm -hmm. at the beginning of the maturation, filling the cask. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we will test both, uh, all the three uh, different uh, white dogs. And mm -hmm. they are tasting very different mm -hmm. because the dilution... Is, is kill some uh, flavors or get some flavors out of it so ah, okay. that makes a difference mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Ooh, yeah it is sharp it's definitely not a round whiskey, but there's a lot of flavor in there. There's a lot of flavor in there. I have to say, yeah, white dog is nice, but I'm a whiskey guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, a whiskey guy. I'm, I'm that, looking that, forward for your that's product. Correct, yeah. <laughs> so to mm -hmm. these flavors, um, the cask maturation gets these oak lactones and so on. So mm -hmm. this is additional to it, and and that makes it very very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So without a cask. Whiskey, yeah, yeah. Talking about Isn't casks, nice. you have a, a program when I was in your your warehouse. There were casks from from customers. So how did that come? Did people ask you, or how did that arise? Yeah, a lot of people asked us uh, to be part of San Kilian, mm -hmm. and uh, the easiest way would be to to get uh, a cask in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, where we fill in our new make, and then um, you have your own cask. You can see maturation. You can follow it. You can have taste with your friends coming to us. Uh, so you can, can drive to the distillery and, yeah, and yeah. have a try at your yeah. cask. Every year. And nice. then you can see how maturation goes on. And so mm -hmm. this is being part of the distillery, being part of building mm -hmm. up St. Kilian distillery. And uh, yeah, in the, in the end, you are owner of the cask too, of the wood. And you can bottle these, um, these uh, uh, casks. And in the end, you have a single cask. You so have a single, so very you, can, special. You, yeah. you bottle your own whiskey then to share with your friends. Yeah, is that, yeah. Oh, nice. for sure. That's nice. Yeah. nice. So, so that program is still running? It's still running, yeah. You can buy a 30 liter cask uh, of mm -hmm. St. Kilian. 30 liter cask, so that's 45 kilos then? 
Yeah, okay. roundabout. Yeah. Will be a bit, yeah. bit, bit difficult if you're an international traveler with 45 kilos. Yeah. That will be a bit, <laughs> bit heavy for your luggage, carry-on yeah. luggage. Yeah. <laughs> more for the German guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. probably a bit more with the local guys. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. so, so what kind of options do I look at at the cask program? Probably you can say I want the peated or non-peated version. Yeah, for sure. And um, then on top you can say you can uh, choose different cask types. Uh, so mm -hmm. an X. Uh, Port wine, sherry, bourbon. Ah, so, so they are uh, recreated, rum. like they deconstruct the cask and cut yeah. it and, and yeah. make a 30 liter cask out of it. Correct, yeah. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah. So you can you can choose from, from different styles. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay. And also an American white oak or a European oak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Virgin oak. So a um, lot of different juice, two different recipes, and mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. So okay. we're increasing even uh, even more. Six, yeah, we have a bit more on top. Six <laughs> percent oh, on metal. Yeah, yeah metal guys. version. Yeah, sixty-six point <laughs> six. Okay. So there's a there's a there's a deep metal tone in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah for sure. We can find a metal tone. Yeah, that's that's correct. <laughs> yeah, the power of suggestion. But in is this high. in this in this case, a more uh, spicy spicy yeah, tone. Yeah. I'm I'm always amazed how how round uh, a new make smells and when you drink it it's not whiskey you expect whiskey but it's not whiskey <laughs> it's not whiskey absolutely mm -hmm. if it would be whiskey then the uh, cask maturation would be mm. yeah mm -hmm. for what mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah <laughs> yeah, 66.6 percent. Sharp, okay, for spicy, sure. <laughs> strong. But mm. the, it's there's something in that cast. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm I'm really about the that why why I think whiskey is a superior product is because of the maturation. Because you have a a round product, you have a a nice nice wood finish, and you have that complexity in there. So I have to say. Mm, nice, but I'm really excited about what what will happen to yeah, this if yeah. when, when we take it Absolutely. out. Absolutely, that's that's our project. Yeah. yeah. So, how how is the timeline? What what's you've built up the distillery? It looks nice. It was a, a very old building. You've renovated it. Everything looks brand new. Nice work. So, what's the future? What are we going to expect? Um, building new stuff, new products. What's what's the timeline there? In uh, products, we will uh, get some liquors next time. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and, and uh, another project for this year is an 18 months matured whiskey mm -hmm. okay. out of uh, water cask. Mm -hmm. So, this will be a little few. What will be in 2019, mm -hmm. in May, when we release our first whiskey? And this ah, is our okay. uh, most important day yeah so when, when you say liquor it's going to be new make with um yeah what you're going to put in it yeah for example uh, honey honey from, from uh, this region yeah mm -hmm. so it's uh, will be four different liquors yeah and and one of one of them is a honey liquor yeah mm -hmm. that's a it's a nice way to to get uh instant return usually you do like oh yeah we do a bit of gin as well and yeah, no, but, this is not our thing. We are yeah. just uh, we are whiskey makers. Whiskey makers. We do single malt, and yeah, we can make products out of mm -hmm. these new makes, for example, which we are producing. But we mm -hmm. don't want to do anything else. Yeah. So, in terms of the distillery, what's the plan with the distillery? Of, I've heard you have a well, and it's not working. So, so, uh, and what about your storage space? It kind of looks pretty full in here. <laughs> what, yeah, what yeah, you absolutely. Do? So we have to build up new warehouses in the mm -hmm. next time. So this is this what we are doing. In the moment and the next time, building mm -hmm. warehouses, building a filling line, building uh, yeah visitor center for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, we want to have visitors here. Uh, Everybody is invited to come to us uh, anytime, and um, these are big projects for the mm -hmm. next time. Yeah. So, when you say you build a warehouse, what what kind of style are we looking at? We're looking at like the big metal warehouse from America or Dunwich warehouses or. Yeah, we will have, um, we tested a lot, but uh, in the end we have a pallet rack system. Yeah? Pallet rack system? Yeah, yeah. So how, how does that work? It's yeah. not like the Irish guy does, uh, standing um, the, the, the casks on top 
of the cask. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's lying cask okay. like on a pallet. Yeah. So yeah. So you uh, put a little rack on a pallet. Yeah. yeah. And then you store the. the and then the we store it in in, in, a, in a steel ah, racking. Okay. So so you have the, the system. Yeah. The the advantages of lying casks and the advantages of oh you can rearrange your cask quite fast with a yeah, forklift. You have um, ah. you have access to every cask and that's was. I'm really looking forward for to us, that yeah. one. I, I yeah. want to see that one, how yeah. that one works out. Yeah. I'm, we, are, we are online retailers, so we, we are always interested in logistics. So yeah. logistics is a, a big thing with us. So, yeah. The style of your distillery, you had, um, what do you call it? You had a bit of an influence from Scotland. You've just been to Japan. You had uh, influence from Ireland. How do you see yourself? Yeah, we have our master distiller, David Hines, is from Ireland. So, but we always did say that we want to uh, do the Scottish way. It's the Scottish. Scottish way. It's a two-time distillation mm -hmm. and not too mild. Yeah, for sure. We want to do. We want to make a new make that is um, uh, drinkable whiskey after three years, six years, eight years. We don't want to have to wait mm -hmm. 12, 15 or longer mm -hmm. uh, years. Um, so. In the end, it is a Scottish way doing it, but um, a bit different, yeah? So mm -hmm. a lot of techniques from Germany inside and uh, experimental style, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of craft uh, inside of it, yeah? But you do get your, your malt for the turf one from Scotland, right? Yeah, we don't get any <laughs> turf uh, peated malt from Germany, it's not uh, mm -hmm. available, so we get it from Glen Esk Maltings. I've been Scotland? working in, in Coburg and I've driven down to, to Bamberg. They have this, uh, what do you call it, Schlengeler. Yeah. That is a very, very smoky beer. Is, is, that, yeah, is that not possible to get into a whiskey? Yeah, we, we, huh? we do it, yeah. One recipe of us is uh, making it a uh, beach smoked uh, mm -hmm. uh, malt. Sorry. Beach smoked malt. Beach, beach smoke, is, is yeah. a tree, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't yeah. know the German word. But the difference is um, that the flavor of uh, beach smoke is very different to uh, peat smoke. Mm, okay, yeah. so um, the, the distillate in the end is uh, completely different. Mm -hmm. So we are testing both, but we are peat heads. Okay, you cannot tell if, anything if else. Peat, so, so yeah, if it's peat, it's peat, and uh, yeah. So okay. now I already have the peat in my nose now. <laughs> I know a few of the uh, of the peated whiskies, and and some of them are quite mild in the nose. This one is. Straightforward, Pete. Yeah, it's 45 ppm. Oh my god, yeah. So uh, it's like Isla style. Mm -hmm. But for sure, it is different to Isla. You cannot copy Isla because mm -hmm. uh, the peat of Isla is very uh, salty mm -hmm. of the tongue, because of the tongue. And um, our peat is coming from Pitsligo, it's in northern Scotland. Mm -hmm. So it's more floral and it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow, that one is flavor. That one, and it's one. It's a rising one. We start with a bit of peat, and then there comes a lot of peat, and mm, there's a lot of flavor in there. But you have to be a You really have to be a Peter to love that. Yeah. But I like it. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Mm, yeah. It's a lot of campfire and ash. It's yeah. very round. Mm -hmm. I would say that comes second to the, the what do you call it, the George Dickel white dog. That, the George Dickel white brown was the only white dog I would say mm, that is drinkable. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is, it is nice. But I wouldn't say it's an everyday dram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't consider an everyday Whis dram. Whiskey is more interesting, for sure. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's our intention. Yeah, we yeah, want I'm, to do whiskey. I'm yeah. really excited about your just, whiskey. Uh, the first step, making mm -hmm. whiskey. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much for showing us around. It was, was very pleasant. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you got a good glimpse of what is the St. Kilian distillery. If you ever come to Germany, then uh, in, your, in the region, then please visit the St. Kilian Distillery. Thank you very much for watching. If you have a friend who might be interested in this video, then please feel free to share this video with your friends. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye.